Hey everyone, hope you're having an awesome day. I'm Coy Wire, this is CNN 10. We've got your 10 minutes of news for the day where I tell you the what, letting you decide what to think. It's Your Word Wednesday, so stay alert for one of your words and let's get straight to some headlines. We start with some major changes coming for teens on Instagram. The social media app announced it's implementing new teen account settings, all in an effort to protect younger users from online dangers on its platform. The new rules will automatically make millions of teen accounts private on the app. Teen accounts will be placed in the strictest messaging settings where they can only get messages and be tagged or mentioned by people they are already connected to. Teen users will also receive time limit reminders, nudging them to leave the app after spending one hour on it each day. And their accounts will default to sleep mode between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Also, the most restrictive settings will also apply to content control for teen accounts, uh, types of sensitive content teens can see on their explore page and in reels will be limited. This teen accounts settings update will apply to all users under the age of 18. 16 and 17 year olds will be able to manually change the app back to their preferred settings, but 13 to 15 year olds will need to get a parent's approval to make any sort of changes. These major changes to how minors have access to Instagram are coming years after a trove of insider documents known as the Facebook papers drew attention to the risks for younger users on the platform. While the update aims to get parents more involved in their teen's online presence and adds new features to its parental supervision tool, Critics say the app fails to properly verify whether a parent is actually in control. Meta acknowledged that it doesn't conduct formal parent verification, but says it uses other checks to determine if a user should be allowed to oversee a teen's account. Pop quiz hot shot, what planet in our solar system has the longest days? Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, or Neptune? If you said Venus, put your hands up. And if you thought you were having a long day, listen to this. It takes 243 Earth days for Venus to complete one full rotation. Next, we are checking out a time-lapse tour of the planet Mercury, like we've never seen before. A joint European-Japanese spacecraft has made its fourth and nearest flyby of Mercury, sending back these jaw-dropping images of the planet's craters. The Bepi Colombo probe was launched in 2018 and is using a gravity assist maneuver to join Mercury's orbit for an eight-year journey around the planet. It's the best view scientists have gotten of Mercury's impact craters, which are formed by large asteroid or comet impacts, revealing more about the history of their formation and of the planet's volcanic history. Did you know that Mercury has a strong arts theme? Two of its most studied craters, the Vivaldi and the more recently named Stoddard Crater, were named for a famous composer and artist, respectively. Dramatic new video into CNN shows devastating floods in Poland in several countries as heavy rains hit Central and Eastern Europe, causing some of the worst flooding in decades for that region. A massive, slow-moving storm dumped months' worth of rain onto several of Europe's historic capitals. All right, everyone, I'm heading to Los Angeles this weekend to interview the Olympic legend, Simone Biles, and we wanna give her a CNN 10 viewer question. So send some questions my way on social media, put it in the comment section of one of my posts, and we're gonna pick one for us to ask her. All right, and now we have a question for you. What would the Olympics look like if Mongolian Emperor Genghis Khan had invented the games instead of the Greeks, well, the World Nomad Games give us a little glimpse. The fifth annual games kicked off in Astana, the capital of host country Kazakhstan. The games can be rough and rugged, challenging the athletes' equanimity, and they keep traditional sport and identity alive for nomadic cultures across southeastern Europe and inner Asia. Horse archery. Strongman competitions. Falconry. These were a few of the sports happening last week at the World Nomad Games held in Astana, Kazakhstan. This was the fifth instalment of the Games, with the first being held in Kyrgyzstan in 2014. 
The competition has taken place every two years since then, except during the start of the COVID pandemic. It takes place during September, as this was the historical shift made by nomadic tribes from summer into winter camping. As well as the sporting events, a cultural programme also took place, celebrating nomadic traditions from the region. At the end of the six-day games, the host country Kazakhstan came out on top with 112 medals, 43 of which were gold. All right, many of us may want to see the world and cross off some amazing places on our bucket list, right? But imagine traveling the world and not being able to actually see it. Joanne Becker is blind, but that hasn't stopped her from traveling to more than 50 countries. Her mission to hear, smell, and feel incredible experiences inspired her deep love of travel. I love that globe. I just adored having a way to just feel where it is I've been in the world. India was a, an explosion of all of my senses. Anything I smell to touch, the silks and the cashmeres. I am Joanne Becker. I was born blind. I have traveled to, I believe, 56 countries at this point, but it's not enough. And I want to go more places. <laughs> I love to get access to maps. It does require <laughs> several volumes of Braille in my case, because I've traveled to so many different places. When my husband was alive, we traveled together and I, I traveled with him. There was a moment when I just thought to myself, if I can't give up experiencing different places to visit in the world, I can't give it up. So I just have to figure out ways in which to do it by myself. Where is my phone? Hey Siri, where are you? I'm here. No, that's the wrong Siri. There are definitely challenges. What is the address for the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston? The address for Museum of Fine Arts is 465 Huntington Ave. Even if it's been a trial trying to do it, it's worth it. So this room is filled with five big white marble sculptures. Got her arm. Yeah, it's like she's kind of bent over and obviously concentrating. So it's not joy and bliss. And it's like she's in, she's focused, I think. I mean, she's trying to listen. She's being, she's trying to attend to something. Nadia, the blind girl with long hair. What? My blind sister, are you kidding me? What, and seriously, she's supposed to be blind? <laughs> That's amazing, oh my gosh. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, a chamber of secrets? Well, not quite, but this 120 year old chamber did surprise a construction crew in Washington DC working near the National Mall. The National Park Service says this 30 foot deep brick lined cistern used to gather rainwater and was found while crews were renovating the Smithsonian Castle. Unfortunately, it was empty. So no more national treasures this time. Thanks to everyone who submitted some stellar words for your Word Wednesday. Today's winners are the Adept Scholars at Mr. Woodrum's classes at Meadowbridge in West Virginia for equanimity, a noun meaning calmness and composure, especially in difficult situations. Thanks for boosting our vocabulary. Our shout out today goes to Decatur Central High School and all the Hawks fly and hide Indianapolis, Indiana, rise up. Thanks to all of you for subscribing and commenting on our CNN 10 YouTube channel for your shout out requests. You rock. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on CNN 10.